Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. In episode 50 of Red Giant TV, Harry Frank brought death and destruction to downtown LA. But it was okay because, you know, it was the business district and we were just kind of sticking it to the man. But this time, it's personal. Aliens are coming to your neighborhood and we have proof. Take it away, Harry. I want to believe. Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. A while back, I did a pretty large-scale tutorial called Alien Attack, featuring UFOs descending upon Los Angeles. And there was a lot going on. There's a lot of laser blasts and lightning bolts and lens flares, shock waves, that kind of thing. Not to mention all the compositing tricks going on. There's some sky replacement, 3D tracking, atmospheric effects, as well as some rotoscoping. So I had a lot of fun doing this. But one thing that always bothered me about this is that it wasn't very accessible to the average person. Unless you purchase stock footage like this to use in your production, or you own a helicopter, this isn't the type of shot you're going to end up with. So I wanted to do something a lot more scaled down and accessible to the average person. So I walked out my front door, took out my iPhone, and shot a little bit of footage, and I decided to track this and revisit the same idea, but kind of scale it down a little bit. So I loaded up my footage in After Effects, and the first thing I did was create a proxy. I noticed that the H.264 footage was running a little bit sluggishly in After Effects as I scrubbed through it and tried to uh, just find accurate points to, to reference and, and edit and all that. So um, my original footage is still there, the H.264, but I created a photo JPEG QuickTime as well. So you can see if I turn this off and I try to scrub through this, um, it can get a little uh, sluggish. So let's turn the proxy back on and we've got a, a low resolution version to work with here. So I think this is the fourth tutorial I've done where we use the camera tracker. Now I thought about using a two-dimensional track on this and if we were just doing a handheld shot like this that kind of bobbed around we'd probably be able to get away with it. But as the camera starts to pan up and rotate towards the sky, that's where it would get a little bit tricky. And I have a pretty good feeling that the camera tracker is going to become uh, a very widely used uh, camera tracking plugin in the After Effects community. So I don't have any reservations saying you really should use a camera tracker for uh, any sort of tracking like this in After Effects where you've got some sort of uh, roaming camera. Now it's a pretty straightforward process. We track, we solve, we create. Now, I've done this before. I've tracked the shot a number of times, and I found that I really need to bump up the number of features to uh, around 300 to get a, a fairly accurate track. I'm also going to trim it up a little bit, because as this camera whips back towards uh, the roof, it becomes pretty difficult a shot to track. So it's going to stop right about here. I'm just going to trim that up, hit N. And we don't need all of this stuff at the beginning where it's kind of just kind of bobbing around. I'm going to trim it up to about right there. So just hit uh, B and N to mark our in and out points and then trim the comp to the work area. All right, and now we're going to track away. And this is where you need to go get a coffee or a snack or uh, whatever it is that you like to do during your breaks. Wander the hallways if you work in a facility. And... Uh, just let it do its thing. Okay, so I've finished tracking, and you can see all the tracking points in here, and I'll be able to use these to sort of align the 3D space of my scene. But I've not solved anything. All I have are raw tracking points. So I'm going to click on Solve. So once it's done, it gives you a little pop-up, uh, and it gives you a reprojection error number here. The lower, the better. If you're approaching three or higher, you might want to revisit your settings here, add some more uh, features, uh, double check your camera type, add any more data that you can to the track. But 1.21 is pretty good, especially considering we're just doing an iPhone uh, piece of video. So now that everything is solved, the last thing I need to do is create a camera. And to do this, I need to define the 3D space of this world. You know, where is the point of origin, where is up and down, where is back and forth. Now, this 
shot doesn't have a whole lot of ground plane to reference to sort of establish that horizon line and where my left right is but I'm going to do my best job and uh, we'll we'll come pretty close and we can always adjust it later there's nothing that locks us into an existing space it's actually very easy to adjust and we'll, we'll do that so first I'm going to find a spot in the video clip where I have a good amount of tracking points on the ground and ideally find some more in another part of the screen. So I have sort of a spread out area of points along the ground that I can define as the ground plane. So now I can go in here and say set the ground plane to those selected points. And now I want to readjust where the point of origin is, or actually define where the point of origin is because we haven't defined it yet. So what I'm going to use for that point of origin is this little point in the chimney right here because my my path is going to more or less move along this area here, my motion path of the UFO. So that seems like a half decent point to, to use as my point of origin. So let's select that point and I'll command click on it. Uh, I need to move the window over so you can see that. Select the point and click on it, go to ground plane and say set origin. Now I just need to create my camera. Now first thing I want to do is adjust the scale of this world. I think it's a little bit off. Um, and because scale is all relative, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be throwing anything off. The tracking is all relative. So uh, I just want to have a little more realistic of a world scale here to, to uh, represent my scene. So let's select the camera tracker and I'm going to create another null object here. So I'll just go up to create a null object from that point right there and I'm going to unparent this from the camera. So as the camera moves the null stays put. So in this first camera right here I'm going to scale up the master null. What we're doing is just scaling the null that the camera is parented to and we bring the overall world scale down. Now I'm going to leave this set for now. I might come back and adjust this if I find that as I add points in space and want to add, animate them from in front of the camera to behind the camera and the, uh, I find that the rotation angles are a bit difficult to control, I can come back and uh, adjust this at a later point. But I'm going to call this good for now. So the first thing I want to do is just set my motion path for that UFO. So if we look at the final render here sort of starts off in the distance and then swoops overhead. Now there's a lot that is going to be controlled here. We're going to have some standard After Effects 3D layers. We're going to have some trap code form. We're going to have some lens flares. So we're going to have all these things. I want to control them from one point. So I'm just going to use a null object for this. So I'll create a null object, make this 3D. I'm going to relabel this the master null. So that's my null object. Now immediately I can see that back and forth in Z space is not exactly what we might think of as a default motion back and forth in Z space. So let's set just a couple keyframes here. So I'll set a keyframe for that position right there and we'll move it forward. So that should be just straight back and forth in Z space and it really isn't. So I can go back to this null object and start to rotate things. Like so. So I'm going to add, uh, adjust that Y rotation. So now it's kind of coming straight at me. Pretty good. Let's rotate it down a little bit in X. Or now kind of going straight forward and maybe a little bit of uh, Z rotation so it's flat. Actually let's move this X back just a little. There. Now it's kind of going straight back and forth. Let's look, select it and look at that uh, set of keyframes there. There. So I'm going to move this way off in the distance out there. I'm holding down the, the shift key to uh, amplify the movement as I drag this. So let's move it way out there, start it somewhere low in the sky, and then set its final position. This is going to go overhead, so let's move this up in Y and 
back behind the camera. And I'll drag this keyframe or more towards the end so as this camera pans up we can get this in the right spot. goes. So the null represents where everything is going to be and how everything is going to move and how it's going to rotate. So let me uh, actually set the rotation. I want a little bit of spin because that's what UFOs do. They're, they're always rotating. Um, so let's go into our rotation here and move the, the Y rotation. So I'll set a simple expression here, option click on the stopwatch, and I'll use time times 300. We want a, a fairly quick spin on this. So there we go. You can see that spinning off in the distance. And there it goes, right by the camera. So let's actually attach an object to this. In fact, I can get rid of this reference null right here. We don't need that. And let's add the bottom of the UFO. So I'm going to create a solid. Call this UFO bottom. And we'll make this square. Let's say, yeah, 800 by 800, I think is pretty good. Let's set this to black. Um, before I make it 3D, let's set the texturing here. So I'm going to go to Noise, Fractal Noise, set the Noise Type to Block. Uh, turn down the complexity a little bit. Let's set it to three layers of Fractal Noise. Turn up the contrast and turn down the brightness. And I'm going to go into Transform, Scale this up. All right, we can always come back to that, but let's troll that closed. The real trick here is to go to distort and use polar coordinates. And we're going to map this rectangular shape into a uh, circular shape. So let's set this to rectangle to polar and that interpolation all the way up to 100. And I'm going to go back in and scale this up just a bit more. There we go. So that's what UFOs look like, at least in, in my mind, that's what they, they look like. You can add a couple uh, sort of dark rings in here simply by going to generate circle. Uh, let's set this to like a dark gray. Uh, we want this to blend back with the original. Let's turn that up in its size. Set the edge to a thickness and turn up the thickness in the circle control. So that's an area where probably we're going to put some, some lights. I think overall I can make this a little darker. There we go. So I want to make this 3D. I want to parent it to that null. Zero out to the position. So I'll just set the X, Y, and Z to zero and rotate this in the right axis. So let's set this to negative 90. And we've got the start of a UFO. Now it's a little flat to the camera when it starts out there. That's one of the things where I, I adjusted this quite a bit and uh, get that just the right angle as it swoops by. And actually it looks like it's pretty low. It's actually going to fly right into my house. So let's, uh, on this last keyframe here, let's go to the Y axis and move that up. There it goes. Still a little too close. Bring that up a little bit more. Here and maybe just a little bit over in X so we can see it shooting right through that opening right there. There it goes. Now don't worry about it being in front of the trees. We'll take care of that in compositing later on. Basically we're going to take a duplicate of the, the video layer and just isolate those dark areas and put that on top so that the trees appear in front of the, the UFO. So from here, let's add a ring of lights, and I'm going to use track code form to do this. So I'm going to create a layer for form. Uh, this I want to be the size of the composition. Let's go to track code form. And I'm going to use an OBJ object to do this. I've got uh, a little uh, circle that I've created, a 12 point circle that has a, a point in the middle and then 12 points that go around. Uh, well, in a circle. So I'm going to drag this OBJ into my comp. Let's just turn it off, go to the form control, set the base form to an OBJ model, 
and then define the OBJ settings down here by setting the 3D model to the tw that 12 point circle. Now we're not seeing it because it's not aligned in uh, the, the space of that null. So let's actually keep that up at the very top here. Um, and I want to attach the form position to that null. I don't want to parent it because it's just going to move the whole layer. I want the 3D space of the base form to follow the null. The only way to do this is with some expressions, but they're pretty simple. All we're going to do is pick whip. So I want to see the position of that master null, and I want to go into form here under base form. Uh, actually, let's bring this full screen. So on the center, X, Y, and Z are both going to have expressions. Alt or Option, click on those, drag the pick whip up to the position, and it's actually going to create the expression for you. Uh, it's going to map X and Y to X and Y of the null, and then drag this one and just parent it uh, to the Z, or I should say target it to the Z location. And there we go. Um, you can see we got some little spheres right up there. Now it's not rotating with it. Um, because we are using expressions, not parenting, we need to define that uh, rotation specifically. So I need to go into the Y rotation here and also add an expression. So let's go into Y rotation and show rotation of the null. Pick whip that Y rotation. Now if we go back here, we should see the those lights. rotating with it. Might actually be rotating at a speed, well, actually we can see it right there. I don't want to get that the wagon wheel effect where it's uh, spinning at a speed where it actually starts to appear to go backwards. It seems to be going okay for now, but I want to adjust the size of those lights. So let's go back into our form, the base form, and I'll adjust the size X and Y so that they are sitting right on top of that ring area. There we go. And rather than use uh, these spheres, I'm actually going to use an, an image that I created. It's a little um, caustic y kind of image that I created for another project, but uh, I think it's going to work well for this. So I'm going to drag this in to my comp, turn that off. Let's go to the particle type and set it to a textured polygon. So this is a three dimensional. Uh, 2D image that I can use as a particle. So I'll define that texture to be that caustic image. Let's turn up the size. And you can see these are actually, well, in 3D space, but they're rotated at the wrong angle. So let's go into the rotation and rotate these flat along the bottom. So that would be negative 90. And maybe size these up just a little bit more. Now the, the original image is on black, so I can take care of this pretty easily by just going into the layer and setting the blend mode to screen. I'll size it down just a little bit. Now we need to add a, a pretty hefty amount of glow. These are alien lights, so they need to be pretty darn bright. What I'm going to do to illuminate these is use shine. So I'm actually going to apply this directly to the form layer. And we'll use a little bit of a expression trickery to get it to project the, the shine layer um, in, in the same 3D space, but sort of uh, above and projecting the, the light rays downward. So first, let's apply shine. Uh, set the transfer mode to, let's say, add. And this needs a hefty amount of boost to get this to work. So I'm going to really crank up that boost. Maybe, I don't know, we'll set it to 70 for now. And the color, maybe we'll set that to electric right now. Or we could also just set, set it to none so that it grabs the original colors of those lights. But I like adding a little bit of blue in there. Maybe I'll just try one color for now. Let's crank up that boost light. So I want this two-dimensional point to sort of be up here like that, but I also want it to follow along. 
So that can get a little bit tricky. But there's an expression that we can use for this. And I've used it quite a bit if you've seen any of my other tutorials, either on Red Giant or on Gray Machine. This uh, two comp expression uh, is quite handy for this kind of thing. So the thing about After Effects is that it's a two-dimensional program, really, when you when it really gets down to the nitty-gritty, everything that's calculated in 3D has a relative two-dimensional position. And we can get access to what that 2D point is using After Effects expressions. And it's a pretty simple expression. So um, I want to reference this null object in 3D space and calculate what its relative 2D position is. And this is what the that 2D comp uh, expression does. So I want to take a look at my two-dimensional shine point, which is right here, the source point. And let's bring this window full screen. So option click on the source point, pick whip that master null. We just want to reference that layer, not its position, because its position is three-dimensional, but we want to reference the layer's relative two-dimensional point. And we do this by putting period two comp with a capital C, start parentheses, and a start bracket. 0, 0, 0 is generally where we start. We need to pick some sort of three-dimensional point, and typically we use 0, 0, 0. It's basically the upper left corner of whatever layer we're referencing, which is this master null. So it'll be that uh, upper left corner of where the null object is. But in this case, we want it actually to be up above here just a little bit. So rather than using zero, we're going to push that y value up just a little bit. Let's hide this parenting column. Now I'm going to go into this uh, set of numbers here, the x, y, and z, and I'm going to take this middle number, push it up 400. So now if I select that source point, you can see that it is up here, and it's going to be locked there in a sort of relative 3D space. Maybe I want it up just a little bit more. I'll set this to 500. I'll bump up this boost light just a little bit more. And see how this looks with the scene. And as you can see, it needs quite a bit more. I don't think I've ever had boost light as high as 300, but uh, it's a good thing it can do it because sometimes you really, really need to over crank that, that brightness. Now, obviously, this is a two dimensional layer and it is uh, pretty flat. There's not a lot of depth going on here. One way I'm going to add depth is simply by adding a little piece of artwork here I drew in After Effects. It's just a solid with uh, two masks on it, one that's elliptical and one that's rectangular. And I'm making a very basic shape. Now this is going to become the top of the UFO. Now I don't want to parent because I don't want this thing rotating. Uh, so I'm simply going to connect the position to the null using an expression. Now one thing we want to do with the rotation is sort of orient this to the camera so that we don't really see that it's a two-dimensional layer. So essentially what I want to do is lock the just the Y rotation uh, so that it's flat to the camera. Now there's a very easy expression that we can copy and paste. This is actually taken directly from Dan Ebert's site, motionscript.com. It has a whole page exactly on this topic where we can auto-orient two-dimensional images to the camera. And that exactly is what I'm going to copy and paste right here. Copy. And go to Y rotation and paste. So now this is going to orient itself directly to the camera. So we don't really uh, lose that illusion that it's a kind of a 3D bubble on top. So let's move this down uh, a couple layers here. So it's below the form layer. And let's take a look at our UFO here. Starting to lot look so bad. One thing I want to point out though is because we have all these things connected to one null object, it makes it very easy to go th go in and change the motion path of this. All the the shine, the form, the After Effects layers are all going to lock right to that null object, which is pretty cool, I think.
Now one more thing I added to my original version of this was another smaller ring of lights uh, on the bottom of this. I'm simply going to uh, take this form layer, well first let's rename it, so I'm, this is form big lights, and then I'm going to duplicate that, I'm going to make another set called little lights. Now I'm going to hit caps lock and not let this thing even try to render because there's a bunch of things I don't want to change before it even starts thinking about it. First I want to get rid of that shine layer. Uh, I'm going to go into my 3D model here. I'm going to set it to that circle.obj. I'm going to set the particle type just to a simple sphere. And I'm going to go into the skip vertex right here and set this to a fairly high number. That circle OBJ is actually is pretty dense, like I said, and we don't need to render particles at every vertex point. So I'm going to set this to 100, so it's going to render every 100th vertex. So we'll have a sort of sp spread out set of lights. Next, let's go down to the particle section and turn the size down quite a bit. Let's set that to, let's say, 3 and give this a little bit of color, like some blue. This actually needs to be set pretty small, so let's set this to 0.25 or 0.3, I think will be good. And if I go to this skip vertex, uh, well, it's going to raise this up just a little bit. The reason I don't want that at, at 100 is I see uh, it doesn't spread them out just evenly so if I set this to 101 it seems to get it just about right. So let's spread the size out just a little bit maybe to about 570 or so. Well, maybe, let's call it an even 600. So let's those hit right around that outer edge of the ring. Now one thing that's going to help sell this in compositing is motion blur. So I want to turn motion blur on for that comp. And I want to turn motion blur on for all these other layers like the UFO bottom, that UFO top. And so we've got quite a bit of motion blur going on in here. I'm going to hit Command K and go into my advanced settings here and adjust this shutter angle. I don't think we need quite this amount of motion blur. So let's set the shutter angle maybe to 90. And while I'm comping here, I'm going to drop the samples down to 8. Uh, we don't need to be rendering 16 samples per frame right now. So now we got a fair amount of motion blur going on. I think it's feeling pretty good. I think that's just about everything that we're going to add for the UFO itself. We can still adjust the, the motion path, but I think the objects are all there. And now we need to start thinking about compositing this. So I mentioned the, the trees need to be in the foreground. So let's take this uh, video layer and put another copy of it on top and isolate the, the dark area. So I'm going to um, duplicate this. Now, one thing to take note of, and actually uh, I should do right now, I've got the camera tracker plugin still on here. And this camera tracker with all those tracking points and that point cloud takes up a lot of data and that's all stored in your After Effects project because well there's nowhere else for it to go so if you're happy with your tracking you don't want to do any other adjustments so you can go in and delete and that's what I'm gonna do uh, you might want to save a backup copy I've got auto save enabled and I've got plenty of backup copies of this project so it doesn't really matter but you might want to keep a backup copy just for safekeeping. So now I've got a duplicate of this layer. Let's just solo this. My first thought was to try to key this uh, using any number of keyers, and even Primat uh, really didn't help me out here because of the, the noise, the compression noise of the iPhone. Uh, keying just wasn't an option. At least I wasn't able to make that to work. So the other option is simply to use the luminance. So I'm going to take two layers of this. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And on the top layer, let's go to color correction, apply some levels here, and I'm going to really start to crush the, the levels of this to basically get the sky into that black and white 
color range, or at least close to it as I can come. And, and this layer was going to become a luminance map for this layer down here. So let's highlight that layer, solo it, go to track mat and say luma mat that image. You know, if I show my transparency, you can see that we've got transparency where uh, those dark areas now. I actually want to flip that so it's inverted. So now I just have the telephone poles and the trees and all that kind of stuff. This is mainly what I'm going to be concerned with. In fact, I'm going to take both of these and select pre-compose and I'll call this the foreground. And if I want, I can just uh, mask out certain areas of this and then mix that back in. Now this is in the foreground. The UFO is behind that layer. We have a little bit of haloing and fringe going on there so we'll need to adjust that. Now I've got that set up. I really should go in here and fine-tune that. So let's look at this on a dark background and select this layer and adjust the levels that we got. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, edge blur on this, but I want to try to get this as close as I possibly can with the color correction. All right, now, so let's go back to our UFO composite. It's looking pretty good. I might apply just a little bit of level correction in here and crush the blacks a little bit and go into key correct, use edge blur and set this just to maybe one pixel or so, so I can blur those edges on there. Maybe a little less crushing of, of the shadow areas. There we go. So now I've got my branches and stuff in front of the UFO looking pretty good. Now one last element uh, I'm going to throw on here is a lens flare. So let's just create a solid. I don't need to do a whole lot of editing with this. I'm just going to throw Nolan Light Factory Easy on here. We'll use the Monkey Planet preset. Looks like that. Add a little blue tint to this. Now there are different ways to link up the position in 3D. I'm just going to use that same exact way that I did with the uh, the shine. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste that expression. So you can go in here if you've already set it, copy and paste. So let's go into Light Factory EZ, go to Light Source Location, paste that, and let's reset that negative 500 back to zero. So it's going to lock that lens flare right to the null location and select use unmult and now we've got our lens flare locked right to that uh, center of the UFO. Push up the brightness a little bit. I probably want to animate this brightness uh, manually. Now there, I could use Null 3D, which actually has built-in depth scaling and all that kind of stuff, but this is really so uh, simple of a, a motion path. I think that having some manual control over this as it gets closer uh, is what I'd rather do. Now, uh, generally with lens layers, I don't like to leave them on a normal blending mode. I tend to set them to something like uh, add or even screen will probably work for this. Yeah, screen works pretty well. So as it comes from the distance, in fact, uh, let's start the brightness down pretty low because it's uh, starting at a low angle and we wouldn't see lens flare. We'll just start it right at zero and have it animate from zero up to that maximum brightness as it swoops overhead. Now one little last piece of the puzzle is the debris that kicks up at the end as the UFO flies overhead. This is done with trap code particular. So let's add a solid. We'll call this debris. Okay, I'm going to be very finicky and make sure that I don't have all caps. I like to make these solids all black. Let's go to trap code 
particular. The hardest thing is really going to be aligning the 3D space of particular to where the UFO is. Now we have a locator. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to use that to parent it because I don't really want the leaves, uh, the, the point of the emitter moving, um, but I will use that single point in time to reference its position. So right about where I want these particles to start as it flies overhead, let's say right about here. That's the position I, I want. So this XYZ position is what I'm going to use for my particular emitter layer in XYZ. So let's bring this full screen and take a look at this 929. In fact, I'll just copy and paste these. In fact, I can select these two, hit SS to solo those two layers, or those two uh, parameters, and just copy and paste. Copy, paste X, Y, and Z. And scale these particles down. Now I've got this layer turned off. Now I'm just going to drag the start point of this layer forward where I would like these particles to start emitting. So as it starts getting close to that area. I'll have it kick up these leaves right in that spot. So obviously I'm not going to have these be a, a single point. In fact I'm going to set these to be emitting inside a pretty large box area. And rather than have them emit uniformly, which makes them go all directions at the same time, I'm going to set these to go in a direction. So I'm going to use a directional emitter. I'm going to use a very high velocity. Like that. I'm kind of getting there. Uh, let me scale this X, or I'm sorry, the Y emitter size a bit. And let's just have the particles stop emitting after the UFO passes overhead. So we'll animate this down to zero. In fact, I probably want a few more particles. And set the size over life to scale up and scale down. I want these to be dark, so I'll, I'll use like a dark brown. So maybe these are kind of leaves. Also make sure that motion blur is on. And I'll go into physics, air, turbulence and have a turbulence affect the position. So as they scatter around, they're sort of whipping and snapping around um, a bit like that. There we go. So now let's make sure those are mixing back in with the scene. Actually seems to be mixing in pretty well. That's about it. In my final composite, I've got uh, a little bit of uh, color correction with Mojo on there, Magic Bullet Mojo, which just adds a little bit of uh, coolish coloring and a little bit of contrast to the scene. And as the UFO passes overhead, I did the oldest trick in the book. In fact, this was my very first tutorial on Gray Machine, which is uh, adding a camera shake uh, with Wiggle. And all I did was add an expression slider that you can see right here that animates from 0 to 90 back down to 0. And that slider controls the wiggle. So wiggles 8 times per second, and then the amplitude is controlled with this slider. So as it passes overhead, it just kind of uh, shakes the layer around. You notice I had to scale it up a little bit so that we don't see the edges. And that pretty much covers it for the UFO. You can download the whole project, including the end titles, on redgiantpeople.com. My name's Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks, Harry. Klaatu Barada Nikto. And by that I mean, great job. 
If you enjoyed this tutorial, check out Harry's site at graymachine.com where you can find a whole bunch of awesome goodies including free presets, tutorials, and a link to Harry's fantastic training DVDs like Complete Training for Trap Code Particular or Trap Code Form Training. Also, don't forget to check out Harry's killer Red Giant Guru preset packs, looping backgrounds for Trap Code Suite, cinematic flares for No Light Factory, video rock for Particular, weddings for Trap Code Suite, and holidays for Particular. Because hey, it's always that most wonderful time of the year. And by the way, you can get all of those and much more as a part of the Red Giant Guru Suite. Don't forget, you can download a free trial version of the software that Harry used in this tutorial at RedGiantSoftware.com. And you can get free presets for Red Giant plugins on RedGiantPeople.com. And to keep up with the latest news about new products, tutorials, tips, and deals, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. I'll see you next time.